Welcome to Delaware Valley Outdoors, special edition. If you're interested in being a professional bass angler, stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. Outdoors, your best source for fishing information on TV, radio, and the internet. Well, welcome back, and we are here with Marcel Veenstra and Brian Clark, who uh, both are professional uh, bass anglers from our local area here, Newtown, Doylestown, so uh, it's pretty close to uh, our area here in Delaware Valley Outdoors. Marcel, let's start with you. Fantastic year, congratulations, and, nice. I, and I have to say that our radio show did a wonderful job uh, getting you uh, <laughs> together, <laughs> which is just a joke. Um, Last year you, you were on the EverStart series, uh, and now this year you've gone up to the FLW series. Give us a little bit of background about the FLW series versus the EverStart series, and uh, how, you, how you've gone up in, in the thing. Well, to get to the FLW series, what I had to do was I had to qualify, well, I slowly moved up the ladder by fishing Redman tournaments for about six or seven years. And then from the Redman series, I qualified for the EverStart series. You had to uh, be a regional qualifier to make it to the uh, EverStart series and I fished that for three years. Then finally I made the top 10 in the EverStart series and that's what qualified me for the FLW series. So this year I'll be going up against all the big name guys and I'll be fishing the FLW circuit this year. Uh, and you know everybody says you know we like to be, they would always like to be a professional angler. I know you're, the trials and tribulations you've gone through, Brian, the same thing, that, that working up to that area. Just give a little background on how, how difficult it is, and we'll talk about some concentration, losing a fish. What do you have to do when, when you're out there and, uh, and the money's on the line? This is a business for you. This isn't a hobby. This is a business. I, if I lose a fish, I try not to let it bother me. Uh, if you uh, let a lost fish play head games with you, it's not a good thing. I just try to refocus again. So most of the time, if I lose a fish, I just try to go on, catch another fish, and instantly you'll forget about it. It doesn't always happen that easily, but you can't let head games get to you. I try to focus out all my opponents and just concentrate on what I can do. I think that's something that really the, the, the listeners should really focus on. I'm going to use that word again, but that, I think that is something where you can get psyched out. A lot of people get psyched out. Even on a local tournament, uh, they don't fish their own game. I think that's basically what you do. Practice is really important. When you go to a strange place, now you've gone to um, the Mississippi, uh, places where you know you don't get a chance, you can't get there every day. How do you focus on something like that to really go there and practice? Well, it, it's a lot of hard work and effort. I try to prepare myself by looking at maps. I will study, you know, I'll know what the fish are doing in that specific time of the year. I want to know if it's a uh, natural lake, if it's a river system, if it's a tidal water. I take all that in, into play, and from there I'll you know, try to create a game plan. Uh, uh, you know, I'll pick out maybe four or five days to practice before each tournament, it, wh whatever, you know, whatever the circuit allows. One circuit you can practice you know, as many days as you want, and BASS I could only practice three days. But uh, I'll try to set up a game plan within that time period and you know, put, some, put something together. And you're looking, again, do you take notes and keep notes about that stuff? I mean, that, I think that's really important. That you can keep some stuff in your head, but you can't keep it all in your head. I think you probably right. go back to your room at least at night and do that. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, ta I'll take some notes and I'll, I'll, st I'll study them. But fishing changes. You have to be able to adapt. So what I try to do is I'll have notes, but there is nothing in concrete. I, you know, I have to be able to make changes on the water as the fish change. I think that's one of the most critical things to be being consistent and being successful. These tournaments are all multiple day tournaments. 
Very rare where you see the same pattern go through all three or four days of a tournament. And how do you know when to switch? I mean, I, I know it's, it's something in your head, it's in your gut, it, uh, but how do you know, I mean, how does that come across? I mean, because you see a lot of guys that will just stay there forever and keep throwing that spinner bait or a buzz bait or whatever, and they don't get that to know when, when to change. That's important. To me, it's a gut feeling. I, I see something, I don't get bit for a little while, instantly I know I have to try something else. I just, in my mind the whole time, I'm trying to analyze what that fish is doing in, in the water. If he's not biting in a specific location for a little while, I'll, I'll change locations. If I see the sun's out and, it, and I'm catching fish, then all of a sudden the clouds come out and I'm not catching fish, maybe they spread out a little bit. Maybe they, you know, they're not as concentrated as they were earlier. So I'll, I'll cover a little bit more water. I'll do things like that. So you, you, you gotta change quickly and it's not only it, it's weather, it's sun, it, it's the wind. It's, I know we, we've talked a number of times with wind has really either helped you or hurt you, right? Sure, that, that, that is a big key. Uh, I think you know the fish always seem to bite better in the wind, but there are so many little things that can change the movements of the fish. Um, tidal influence, that's another thing. A lot of the tournaments that we fish are tidal influence. I fished the Hudson River this year, the Potomac River this year. Uh, there's a major change there. Like you said, it could be wind, it could be sun, it could be clouds in the uh, Everstart Series Championship. Four days, four patterns. Yeah, and you had to adapt to each Every, each, every day each it was different. Okay. Brian Clark, coming from the other side. Brian, you've, you've done shows with, with me already on Delaware Valley Outdoors. We fish together as partners in local tournaments, and now you've uh, decided to jump up to the big time. Tell us a little bit what made you decide to do that, Brian, and you know, you, you're successful around here, but you, you're going up. Well, Bob, what made me decide to give it a try was i uh, been fishing in Peace Valley bass anglers for about eight years now, and I uh, fish very consistently with them. Uh, I was invited to try a couple of open tournaments uh, over the past five, six years, placed well in almost every open tournament that I fished in. So I decided to give it a shot. When the Northern Division was introduced this year in Bassmaster, I figured I'd try it as an amateur. And I had two thoughts in mind, really. Uh, my first thought was, who better to learn from than the pros? Because you get uh, match, matched up with a different pro every day that you fish up there. And also, I, I felt like I was going up against guys on my level and would give me good insight onto how talented I was in comparison to my competition. Fishing from, uh, on the amateur side, you're fishing from the back of the boat. <laughs> As we all know, guys, it's a little tougher fishing from the back of the boat than it is from the front of the boat. And I think that, I, that you did quite well from fishing out of the back of the boat. How did you adapt to, to that? I mean, because that's tough, because you're going up against some pretty tough guys in the front of that boat, and you fish with some pretty good guys. I fished with a lot of good fishermen uh, on BASS this year. And what I did was, is I focused on my strengths as a fisherman. I didn't try to imitate or copy any of the guys that I was fishing with. Not that I didn't watch what they were doing and try to pick up a pointer here or there, but I just played my strengths and I got my bites here and there and uh, was able to do very well. Now, you, you did quite well, really. Um, give me some, just a few things that happened on a tournament trail. Guys helped you a little bit, maybe every once in a while when you got, like, uh, your, your pro got his fish and then he gave you the water? Well, uh, yeah, once in a while, the, the pros are all decent guys, and they'll throw you a bone whenever they get a chance. Uh, they get a chance to push uh, whatever baits uh, they're being sponsored by. They'll offer you a spinner bait or a crank bait to help you out. Uh, but really, the highlight for me was being able to help my pro at Thousand Islands. <laughs> I had a limit, and I was culling by lunchtime, and with an hour and a half left in the tournament, uh, my pro had two fish, and I was able to loan him some baits, and he finished with a, a limit, and he did very well. And I know you won't tell us that bait, uh, that, that you're going to be making a lot of money on this. <laughs> it was a little plastic thing. Yeah. <laughs> but again, uh, I know the story, and you adapted a little bit with that bait, and uh, the pro really didn't adapt that well, and then he, he got onto that bait's case. Yeah, well, like Marcel was saying, uh, the, the pro was on a solid pattern, but by the third day of the tournament, the pattern had changed a little bit, and uh, the pro didn't actually have that bait with him, didn't pre-fish with it. And, uh, I came along, had a few extra in the box, and uh, loaned them to him, and we both finished very well. We both had real good limits that day. That's good. Well, look, we'll be right back after these messages. You hear the beep a little louder. The Jets program has helped me so much in the outdoors. For a long time, I didn't even know what conservation even was. 
build our park for wildlife. I love being a Jake. Whether you hunt or not, the Jake program has something for everyone. I know I'm doing my part for wildlife. I really believe children hold the key to the future of wildlife. And NWTF believes it too. Angler won the Everstart Northern Division this year in just his second year in the Everstart Series. He's a six-year veteran of the BFL. His semifinal total of six pounds, 12 ounces, just enough for a shot at the title. From Newtown, Pennsylvania, Marcel Veenstra. Pennsylvania's Marcel Veenstra was next to take a shot at the lead, but a single small fish didn't do it. You look like you're shallower than mo most of these guys. Yeah, I was fishing shallow. I was... Uh, in maybe one to five feet most of the time. And what bait are you using out there? I was using a uh, Yamamoto Senko and a Zoom Finesse Worm. And your favorite color? Green pumpkin. And I noticed there you caught that one around a log. Most of them come around structure? Um, every day it changed. Sometimes they were on points, sometimes they were on uh, sandy cuts, and sometimes on some wood. It took uh, at least a couple hours every day for me to figure these fish out. They, it, it was just four days, four completely different patterns. I know one of these days he'll sit on the winner's platform. Great job, Marcel Veenstra. back with Marcel Veenstra and Brian Clark and we're just kind of getting information about what it's like to be a pro and an, another pro here that uh, you guys, which I think you guys are crazy, I'm going to have to tell you that to actually do this stuff. Um, I guess it's a dream of every bass fisherman to, to, to go and do that. Marcel, um, sponsorship is tough. Everybody, everybody I know you think, I got to get a sponsorship, I got to do that. It's more than being a, just getting sponsorship. You really have to work for that area, and you really have to represent yourself and present yourself in, in a, a really good way because people are looking at you all the time. What's the hardest thing to get out that you can get to people to get that sponsorship? It's, you know, what do you do? Well, I, I think you just have to get your name out there. I think you have to be able to uh, speak well in public. I think you have to be able to sell their product. I think that's what they're looking for. Um, sponsorships, there are only a limited few paying sponsorships and they're really hard to come by. So there's only a select group of guys that are going to reach these sponsorships. And it, it, yeah, there's a very select few. You get the Ricky Clons and, and, and the, those kind of guys. Uh, but the guy, I mean, the young kid that's coming up, he wants to start. Give him some, a few uh, tips. Start with the local tournaments. Reading what what? Well, if you're just starting out, I think the best thing to do is to get out there and fish as much as possible. The more you fish, the more experience you get, the better off it is. Get into small electric motor only tournaments, a couple of the local club tournaments. There's lots of those all around the state of New Jersey, Eastern Pennsylvania. We have them all over the place. Uh, just jump right in. I think it's important to be aggressive in bass fishing. If you want to be successful, you c cannot be timid. You have to go out there. It's a lot of hard work, even on these local tournaments. There are a lot of guys that spend a lot of hours on these bodies of water. They're tough to beat. So you have to get out there, fish those, then you move up into either your federation tournaments or your uh, BFL tournaments. Now when you say federation, now that's a BASS right. thing. Give us a little background just on the BASS stuff. You have to join BA Bass and whatever. Right. Well, well to uh, fish any uh, BASS tournament, you have to be a member of Bass Anglers Sportsman Society. It's basically made up of the uh, federation, which each state has a federation. Then after that, there's the northern opens, or, or the opens in general in this area would be the northern opens that most guys are fishing. And then once you've come in the top 15 in an, an open circuit, then you've qualified for the Bassmaster Tour. And that's as high as you can get. And then and the tour, that's the... Well, that's, and that's what all, you know, anybody fishing BASS, that is their ultimate goal, to be a, you know, a member of the Bassmaster Tour. There's only a select, I think, 175 now. It used to be called a Top 150, but I think it's up to 175 now. And they've changed it, uh, the, the 
how do you get through this stuff now? I mean, you start out with like 150 boats or 250 boats in one day, and then how do they break it down like that now? Well, um, the tour, the tour itself, I'm not really sure. Um, I know in the on the FLW, which is equal to the tour on the opposite side in FLW outdoors, that it's two days of fishing, 175 guys. The top 10 go on to the third and fourth day. So the top 10 guys with overall weight after two days advance to day three and four. They start from zero, and it's your cumulative weight from days three and four. Do you like it that way? Or do you like it? Uh, I think that's a better way, but then you get. Get some it, other guys. It's, it's hard to say. I fished, you know, the BASS tor tournaments this year. I fished the um, Everstart Series tournaments. One's run one way, and one is your total weight after three days. I'm not sure which one I like better. It's that's a tough choice. It depends how you're doing. That's right. You like the one when you you have yeah. the most weight. Yeah. That's right. Brian, now uh, you're coming this year. You're going to fish the Northern Division here. What lakes? Do, you, do we know even when the lake? What the, the schedule is yet? I haven't heard the uh, official tournament schedule. There's rumors flying around, though, that uh, we may be going to Lake St. Clair, Lake Champlain, and, of course, back down to the Potomac River. Mm -hmm. The reason I brought that up is it's travel. You're going to have to, to travel at time and, and practice and stuff like that. And an amateur, you're, you're going to be coming to the pro side, cost. <laughs> kind of just give an idea. You're just coming into this this year. This is why I'm bringing this up. What do you think your average cost is going to be? And I'm doing this for the, the people out there that say, you know, I really want to be a, a bass professional. What do you think it's going to cost you, Brian Clark, this year to, to get into fishing? Well, just for uh, one tournament, the entry fee would be 800 bucks for uh, Northern Division Open. And then uh, depending on how far you got to travel, uh, towing a, a boat, that's a huge expense. Um, then you have to find some place to stay. Uh, you can find a budget motel or a roach motel or you could go top of the line. Uh, I'm looking at for a week, three days practice and three days uh, fishing uh, competitively. Uh, competitively. I'm looking at like twelve or $1,300 weeks. Well, and I'm just bringing up that's just the cost of doing it. You got a boat that's coming up yet, right? <laughs> And I don't know how many uh, people out there know what a, a, a new bass boat costs, but it's, it's getting up there to um, get expensive. Tow vehicle, gas. So it really does cost a lot. A lot. Marcel, now you, you did run this year. Average, what was, what was an average tournament costing you? I tell you that, my wife will leave me. <laughs> <laughs> I know your wife, and she's very supportive, which is very important, and you know yeah. that. Yeah. Average cost per tournament, oh, that's, that's, that's a tough one. Hey, they probably ran this year for me around fifteen hundred dollars, seventeen hundred dollars a tournament. The the le it's going to go up this coming year because just the entry fees alone in the um, FLW for the six tournaments that's I think twelve thousand three hundred dollars. Just the, just the entry just fees. The entry fees. That's so. not traveling. That's not gas. That's not oil. That's not motel fees. So now look, if you guys want to get out there and girls too, you got to look at all those costs to. Uh, to get into to bass fishing, it's just amazing the the camaraderie, the fun that we've had fishing, just as friends and stuff like that. But when you get up to that level, uh, and I guess everybody's basically at that level, right? Am I correct? Oh yeah, you're yeah. not going against anybody that's just pay, paid their money. They're they're good fishermen. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's no weekend warriors anymore. Once you get to this level, that's you know everybody's doing it as a job. Mm -hmm. Brian. The level that you came up from, you know, you, you and I fished together. Now you're up there. You, you, you see, what, what do you see that you really need as, as a person going into that to kick up your, your fishing? Is it the concentration? Is it the, that I'm as good as the rest of the guys or, or what? Well, I think I have the, comp the uh, confidence and I have enough support uh, from the people at work and from my family and friends. Um, I think what I need to do is spend a little more time in the water. Uh, like the local tournaments that we fish in, uh, if we have a tournament on Saturday, uh, you might take a day off of work Friday, get some time on the water, um, and if you come in and you catch two or three fish, you're, you're pretty happy. Uh, the level I'm moving into though, I'm going to take my practice a lot more seriously. Uh, I'm going to spend a lot more time pre-fishing, uh, learning new baits, new techniques, uh, doing whatever I have to do because I'm going to need a limit. To be competitive on this level, I need to bring in a limit every day. You brought that up, Marcel, consistency. You don't have to win every one, am I correct? You'd like to win every one. We all like to do that, but you don't, that's one thing you really got to 
Good one, right? Yeah, I, I try to make it my goal to win every tournament, but you got to be realistic. You're going up against 165, 175 guys. If everybody won one tournament, you'd win every one out of every 165, 175 tournaments. I tr if you if you give it the effort to try to be number one, and you come close, you're always going to be up th up there pretty high. So I try to stay consistent and bring in a good bag of fish every day. I just try to do the best job that I can possibly do on the water. I don't, you know, I don't want to expand my horizons to the point where I'm worried about those other guys. I want to focus on what can I do? What is the best bag of fish that I could personally bring in? And if you do that, and you do the best, and you're focused on what you're doing, it'll all follow through. And that, like, like Brian said, that limit. Just, and now, now, do you go with catch a limit quick? Do you try that? And then, and then go for the big ones, or are you just saying, I'm go every fish is going? going. Right now, at, at this level, I try to go for big fish right away. I, I feel pretty confident in m most tournaments that a limit's not even an issue. I feel like I'm going to go out there and get you know, a few good fish. I need to get the bigger, bigger ones while they're biting. A lot of big fish are caught later in the day, too. But when fish are feeding early in the day, I try to go after the big ones right away. I think that was one of the faults I had years ago. I was too worried about getting a limit. I went for the smaller ones, or, or, you know, just to get a limit, and then I go after the big ones. Well, the big ones were already eating, so now I go for the big ones first thing. And then, and then just then I keep I, upgrading all day. I will try to fish for the bigger fish all day long, and I, usually I'll have a spot where I think I can get a limit of fish, and at that point I'll just try to, you know, if I'm struggling, I'll just go to that spot and pick off a few. We'll be right back. After this one. for your free gun safe educational book at 1-888-4-EAGLE-4. That's 1-888-4-EAGLE-4. You can hear the beep a little louder. The Jets program has helped me so much in the outdoors. For a long time, I didn't even know what conservation even was. I want to do my part for wildlife. I love being a Jake. Whether you hunt or not, the Jake program has something for everyone. I know I'm doing my part for wildlife. I really believe children hold the key to the future of wildlife. And NWTF believes it too. Mommy, what's wrong? You can refuse to be a victim, and we can help. Call now about the I Refuse to Be a Victim safety course from the women of the NRA. It's not about guns or joining the NRA. It's about planning your own personal safety strategy. Call now. Wild Turkey Woodlands program uh, provides the materials. It provides a seed program. Also technical assistance through their biologists. The land has been here for eons. It's only mine and my family's for a short period of time. We're the managers and the, and the caretakers of it. That takes into account our way of life and our interest in our hunting heritage. And the Wild Turkey Woodlands program is the greatest conservation habitat development program of any conservation organization in this country. Well, Marcel, Brian, it's been it's been great. Um, I want to wish you the best of luck this year. Uh, you know. We want you both to come on the radio show and you know tell us all your your uh, your trials and tribulations out there and your wins. I want to hear a lot of wins. Uh, we like that. A lot of the people uh, listen to the radio show um, like to hear you guys. And we want to do that. Um, any final thoughts about the uh, bass fishing and uh, and the tournament trail? Well, I want to wish uh, my partner here, my new competition, <laughs> a, a, a little bit of <laughs> luck this year, and ho hopefully you know. Uh, we could hook up and maybe even do a little fishing together. Um, I'm going to give it the best effort I could possibly give this year. My goal is going to be to win one of these tournaments. I haven't won one yet. I'd like to win a tournament. Um, in the FLW circuit, I would like to qualify for the championship this year. That would, If I qualify for the championship, I think that would be a satisfying season for me. Right. 
Well, I'd just like to say I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to it, and I wish the season started tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, of course, I'd like to wish Marcel the best of luck, too. Uh, he's going up against some pretty tough competition there on the FLW Tour. I want to thank you guys. It's been uh, really good. And if you want any information, more questions, anything like that, stop at our website at Delaware Valley Outdoors, and I'm sure these guys could probably answer a few questions for you because we can get that email for you. And uh, I want to thank you guys again. Good luck, and uh, I want to see both of you on TV, not only on my show, but on, on that FLW Tour and the BASS Northern Championship. I'm Bob Murray. It's the Delaware Valley Outdoors. I'll see you on the water.